So what is the magical device that allows this excavator to turn 360 degrees while still supplying oil to like the blade and the drive motors, right? We can't run hoses from the control valve all the way down to the uh, drive motors and the blade because if we were to spin 360 degrees, right, the hoses just get all tangled up and twisted and it'll, it'll blow them apart. Because um, you can turn this thing up to 13 times in one direction before it unscrews itself and the top falls off. But um, in order to turn 360 degrees 13 times, there has to be something in there to allow that oil to flow through there. And that's what we're going to take a look at today because this one's leaking, it's coming out, and it sucks. All right, so now we're going to roll under this machine and we're going to take a look at what we call the swivel joint. The swivel joint is that magical device that allows this to rotate 360 degrees. But in order to get it out, we got to go from underneath and from up top to get all these hoses off. So let's take a look at what we're uh, looking at from underneath first. You can see I've already got started on this joint. You know, these are all the hoses here. You see all the fittings up there. And I mean, that thing is just massive. And it's, I mean, it's pretty heavy. I would, I'm guessing that thing's probably 80 to 100 pounds, I guess, maybe. Um, but anyways, so we've got a bunch of hoses down here. Um, right underneath the center right here is where the oil is coming out. Um, this piece is the uh, center valve and it rotates in the outer housing here and oil was just pouring out of that, so we know we need to reseal it. Um, so yeah, we got all these hoses off from underneath, and then we've got these four bolts uh, here. There's mounting bolts, there's two right here, and then there's uh, two uh, over here on the other side. And um, that's how we're gonna get that swivel out. So now that we got all these bottom ones done, uh, we're gonna have to go up top and get those top hoses undone. And I've done a lot of swivels on machines, but um, I have not done one of these early style. This is a 341, so 337, 341. This is kind of what I call like a square body style. Uh, before they went to the G series, I've done a ton of the G series and all, um, even the R series, uh, R2s. I mean, I've done swivels and all these, and, and usually they're pretty straightforward. The swivels come out pretty easy. This is probably the hardest one if you don't make a little shortcut, and I'll show you the shortcut here in a second. Uh, this is probably one of the hardest ones to get this swivel joint out because the manual says to access those hoses at the top of the swivel joint, it wants you to literally pull the whole control valve out and the swing motor. Now this swing motor is what actually drives the house around the lower carriage, um, but we're not working on you know, the, the drive motor itself. Uh, or the slew motor is what we call it. We're actually working on the swivel, but, but to access that, it wants you to remove all this stuff so you can kind of come in here and get those hoses out. Now, before I show you this, <laughs> I just want you to know, th this is my machine, so I, can, I don't need anyone's permission to do what I did, but if it was someone else's and I was gonna take this route, I would give them the option to, you know, pull that control valve and, and that, then you're, then you're risking a bunch of other work, you know, maybe loose hoses, extra hydraulic leaks and stuff like that and pulling that uh, swing motor out. It's just a lot of added extra labor. So this route I went with because we're saving a ton of money and possibly saving future problems down the road. Okay, so we pulled, you know, the floor mat out and stuff and, and here's our hole now where we can I know it's kind of hard to see, but this is where we can access the hoses to the top of the swivel. But it was very difficult to get in there with this piece. This piece goes blah, 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 kind of in there like that. So then all you've got is this tiny hole to work through and you can't really get your wrenches or anything in there. It's just really, I mean, I, I guess it's possible, but this is a non-structural piece. So I just took my plasma cutter, cut out a little more room. And now we've got a lot more room to work in here to get this swivel out. And then when we're done, uh, we will just clean this up, re-weld that piece in, and you'll never know we even took it out. So what I've got to do now is go ahead and get all these top hoses off, then we can unbolt the swivel and go ahead and pull it out. And then we'll talk about how to rebuild this swivel. All right, finally, we got the swivel out. It wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was gonna be, but here it is in all its glory. I mean, there's a bunch of fittings and, uh, you know, it just, it, it kind of looks complicated, right? But let's simplify this. Let, let's take a look at something else that might help understand how this works a little better. And what we're gonna look at 
is my hose reel. Okay, look, we've got air coming in from the compressor into the inlet manifold, and then we've got the outlet. Let's see what happens when we pull it out. Look at that, it spins around the inlet manifold. And there's a couple of O-rings in there on either side of that. You know, one here and one here, and there's just a hole drilled in the middle, then a hole in the inlet manifold that goes inside to the air hose. So, so hit. see how that works? I mean, there's not much more simpler way to understand it than looking at that air hose reel. I mean, basically this is the same thing. You know, the top uh, spins inside the housing. All your inlets and outlets kind of come in here and inlets and outlets <laughs> come out the outer housing. So hopefully that makes a little more sense. But what we're gonna do now is go ahead and start tearing this down, getting the seals in there and getting it ready to put back in the machine. So first thing we gotta do before we put this in the press, cause we're gonna press uh, the inner housing out of the outer housing. So what we got to do is there's a snap ring down here that uh, basically just holds that uh, inner manifold to the outer uh, manifold itself. So using my snap ring pliers, we are just going to uh, get this large snap ring off. Okay. And then what we have here is what we call a bearing, uh, where we are gonna replace this. It's just kind of a uh, something for that uh, snap ring to slide on. There's also one up top, but we got some new ones we're gonna replace with. So now what we gotta do is just push on this to get out of the outer house. So I'm gonna rig this up in my press real quick and then we'll press it out and then we'll see all the O-rings and everything inside. So right now I'm just using a socket and an extension. And uh, I'm just gonna use a combination of you know, whatever it takes to kind of make up that gap so we can push that out. But you can see, I mean, I know, I've seen people hammer it out, but you're beating on the bottom of your manifold. I just don't like to hammer it out. I mean, the press is just a much more, I don't know, professional. I don't want to say professional, but less Neanderthal, I guess. That's what my dad always called it, with being a damn Neanderthal. I mean, it pressed out pretty easy, but you know, he, here we are looking at the inside of the manifold. We can see all these holes in there. So, right, it works just like the air. You know, we got our drive holes down here. We've got our blade holes up here. We've got case drain up here. And see, they're all separated by different O-rings. <clears throat> okay, we've got another one of those bearings up top. So that's gonna be the top uh, swivel bearing um, that it rides on, just like we had one at the bottom, right? We got one at the top as well. And then we've got all these seals here. We'll take a little closer look at those. But so we got 10 of these in the middle and then at the top and bottom, we've got the actual oil seals. Oil seals, I guess. What's cool about this is we can actually see the failure. Um, and I always like to you know, find exactly what failed, but here it is. We can see that that seal is actually split. Um, and that is, it's actually really brittle. See, it actually broke right there. Um, so it's just, it's just old, you know, it was, it was time to be replaced, but that's what actually failed. So I'm gonna take a few minutes, get all these seals torn down, get it cleaned up, and then we're gonna reseal it. And th this is the, probably the most important part is how to get these seals back on the inner manifold. Or, um, yeah, the inner manifold. Now we're gonna look at the outer manifold and we're just inspecting the bore here, um, just checking it for any wear, or any grooves or anything. I, I do have, a little groove right here at the top. I can barely, yeah, I can barely feel it with my pick, but we're gonna have to clean that up. That's where that upper uh, yellow seal was riding. So we're just gonna have to clean that up, but the rest of it looks pretty good. We can still see our hatch marks from the original um, machining. And I know it kind of looks bright in the camera, but there are still hatch marks through here where our seals were riding. We can see where our seals were actually riding. So I think all that looks good. I'm not worried about that leaking at all. So I think this is definitely a rebuildable swivel and a lot of people don't rebuild them because putting these seals on and pressing this thing back together is a little tough, you know? I mean, there's a technique you have to use to get it right. And a lot of people do mess it up. So they would rather replace the whole thing. Um, 
but this is like a $5,000 manifold, so it's not cheap to replace. That's why we opted to rebuild it in this situation. So let me get it all tore down. We'll take a closer look at the seals and how we get this resealed. All right, so I've got my inner manifold now. It's just kind of rigged up in the vise on one of the hydraulic fittings, and it's just kind of upright. So we got it all cleaned up, and you could see there was a little bit of surface rust in there, and that's kind of normal for machines that sit a lot, and this one does sit a lot, or it has sat a lot. So we got all that surface rust cleaned out, you know, the best we could. A little bit um, leftover is not gonna hurt it. So now we're time to uh, do the seals. Um, this is our seal stretcher, but we'll get back to that. I've got everything laid out here. Here, we, of course, we're using all original Bobcat OEM parts. We don't want to do this job twice, so we're using the good stuff. We got our bearings. You know, we got that upper and lower oil seals we're talking about. And then we've got all of our uh, middle seals. And you can see that all of these are like a two-piece. So we've got an O-ring. That's easy to stretch. We'll go ahead and stretch all those O-rings um, into the grooves here. And then this outer ring, uh, Teflon-style ring, is we're going to have to stretch that and get it over the top. And many of times, and many of hydraulic cylinders that use the same type of seal, I would just kind of stretch it and rotate it, you know, in my hands. But if you're not extremely careful, you can overstretch this, and then it, it, it really sucks to get it to shrink back down onto that. We got to stretch it to get it over the groove, then we got to shrink it back down so that we can press it back into the, uh, the outer manifold here. But we'll get into that. Uh, first thing we're going to do is <clears throat> I've got a pot of oil here. I've already got it on my burner. We're gonna put all these outer seals, while I'm putting my uh, O-rings on the manifold, we're gonna put all these seals into an oil bath. There's different ways to heat these up. Some people heat them up with water, different things. I like to heat them up in oil. Uh, we're gonna get this up around 250 degrees, and then we're gonna start stretching these one by one and get them into place. So Right, I went ahead and put in the upper oil seal and all the O-rings. Now we got to start stretching our seals and getting those on. See my little oil bath here? I'm just using a pot. Yeah, it's getting really hot. So uh, about 200, 250 degrees when we want to start stretching these and that is getting really close. <clears throat> this is my seal stretcher. If you want to know where to get one of these, let me know. Um, usually I have these in stock right now. I'm out, but I should have more coming very, very soon. Because this, when you're stretching seals that are this expensive and you need to have repeatable results, this is the way to do it. Now we can set the amount of stretch that we want on this seal stretcher and we're going to do that. Once we get one uh, seal stretched to the right length, um, then we'll go back and, and set it so that all of them are set the same. Then after the stretch, we can just kind of walk this on. Um, so yeah, that is the perfect length. That one might just be a little tight, but I would rather it be a little tight than too loose. So I'm gonna walk it down all the way to the lower, um, I guess the lower portion of this valve first. Now I've got it at the groove, we're just gonna use our fingers try not to use any tools on this to damage the the seal itself so that is a really nice fit but uh, you can see or maybe you can't that you know once you stretch it of course it's a little big so that's where we're also going to use our seal clasper which is this piece here you know i used to use like a, um, a piston ring type installer but this with this thin band the way it's designed this is actually designed for this job and this just works much better so i've also got these <clears throat> available 
on the website and hopefully here pretty soon. That tool does a really nice job of bringing that seal back into uh, the right size. So we're gonna go ahead and repeat that process for all these, um, stretch them on, clasping them down until we get them all installed. All right, so we got all the seals on, man. And this, um, let me grab it for you. This seal tool here with the band on it. I mean, if you've ever done, it's not just for swivels, of course, because this is the same type of seals that are in uh, hydraulic cylinders. So um, if you don't have one of these, man, uh, definitely give, ask me where to get one. And, and hopefully these will be on our website uh, back in stock real soon, but because they are very, very helpful. I mean, it just did an incredible job of bringing these seals back into position but we're not out of the woods yet we still have to get this back into the manifold over here and don't forget the seal stretcher um we can stop it there and that just gives us good solid repeatable uh, stretched seals that we don't overstretch them it's, it's just perfect it, between that and the seal tool that's what's going to determine whether or not you have a successful rebuild on one of these swivels so yeah definitely ask me about these but yeah now we got to get the um the internal one and the outer manifold and um, I know it's, it's kind of hard to see I haven't cleaned this one up yet we're about to clean it up but right here there is a ramp it's, it's, it's kind of chamfered at the top there's a little V or I call it a V it's more of a chamfer so the seal can ride on that ramp down in there but you have to be very careful we're gonna put this back in the press and just slowly press that back in there and one thing I forgot to mention is that before I took it apart I do make a little mark on both the outer and inner because we want to clock these correctly when we put them back together because if we don't when we try to put it back in our machine and if you got one that's off you know 30 degrees in either direction it's going to be really difficult to get it back up into the machine without having to try to spin this and if you want to try to spin this with new seals on it good luck it is it is very very difficult so yeah that's the only reason I make a mark on the top and bottom we line them up when we press them together So what I'm doing is I went ahead and lubed all these seals now that we're putting it back together uh, with just some assembly lube. And um, of course, after I already cleaned up uh, my manifold here, um, got this clocked it's pretty close. Yeah, about right. About right there is where I want it. So what I did is I went ahead and pressed in the first oil seal and now I'm getting down into one of our intermediate seals. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that right down to the ramp and we're gonna watch all the way around that seal, make sure that it is entering the ramp. We're gonna use a little plastic tool to kind of push it in if we need to, uh, to make sure that it is riding down inside there. So that's why I like to use the press. Um, it's really slow and very controlled, but you don't want to you know, go too fast you want to get right up to that seal. Yep, that rode in perfectly. Now we can speed up and get down to our next one. Okay, same thing. We're gonna watch it all the way around very slowly. Push that in there. Okay, that looks good. Yep, rode right down the ramp so it's not getting twisted or in a bind or anything. I mean, it's just going very nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that for all these. We're gonna get it down into position. Then we'll put up on the bench, put our snap ring on. Then we gotta work on everything else.
Okay. All right, now that we've got it pressed back together, we can go ahead and install our new lower bearing and our snap ring. So now that we got the swivel rebuilt, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull out all these fittings and go ahead and replace the O-ring bars. These are ORB fittings, so they're going to have O-rings on them. They, these are also uh, O-ring face as well. So not only do we have O-rings on the inside, but we have O-rings on the outside too. So some of these sitting, fittings actually loosened up as we were taking the hoses off. And um, so to be on the safe side, I'm just going to go ahead and replace all of the uh, O-rings. And it looks like a... Uh, damaged one fitting somehow pulling it out so I got to get that fitting replaced but anyway so that's how you reseal the swivel um, the only other tip I have for this and I'm, I'm not really going to film putting it back in there because it's it's just so hard to film and just it's boring really but on these two fittings I like to have a helper okay or I've done this by myself or I've kind of rigged up a um, ratchet strap up in the machine or a uh, come along and on these two fittings here on the outside, I'll take like a piece of paracord or something. I'll make a loop like a handle, right? And then I can hook either my come along or even if I have a helper, they can grab that, um, that piece of paracord and kind of lift this up from the bottom and help get into position because it is so heavy. And um, it, it just really makes it a lot easier to have a helper or come along or something just to pull this up into position spin it in set it on its pedestal and bolt it down then we can start doing all the hoses so the whole point of the video was showing off the new tools that we've got in stock or we will have in stock we're sold out right now but hopefully by the time you watch this we'll have more on the website and basically just how to get those seals in the swivel but we're going to go ahead and get the machine put together tested and i don't think we're going to have any problem with it this went back together very well so thanks for watching please let me know if you have any questions on that it's not the only way to do it it's just how i did it